I don't know who you are but I'm glad you decided to waste your pathetic life to mess with me. Now I don't feel so depressed about my life having seen what you do for kicks. If I were you I'd go into the bathroom and slit my wrists. At least someone somewhere in your life put some effort into helping you, even if it was to clean up the blood puddle from your suicide. If I had a US stock for every loser that tries to imitate me and use my name I'd be richer than that asshole monopoly guy with the handlebar moustache JP Morgan. I mean where do these shallow pricks come from an assembly line of dicks for tricks? It's like once you peel away the facade of their pathetic gimmick they use to convince people they're the devil all you have is a sniveling coward of a monkey's uncle three times removed from my property by the sheriff's department and only twice related through identity theft. My mysterious creep antagonist who hides like a chicken with no spine in the shadows. Do me one favor will you? If you should decide to ever sleaze your way into the soul dealing racket don't bother try to acquire souls by selling life montages. I mean your life choices are obviously so bad if you decided to mess with me from the shadows like a true coward no spine with no guts because it's obvious that you have no balls to generate but you are. I mean you could mess with someone at least in good health but not you don't have the guts to do that. I wouldn't even be able to consider you a demon let alone an adversary worth wasting the money on for an exorcism. Today's video will be titled So You Went and Sold Your Soul to the Devil, and or Demon. This is a digital instructional guide for the basic FAQs for those curious as to certain aspects such as, 1. How do I use the red phone to call for help? 2. How exactly do I classify as far as entitlements of the afterlife? 3. What are the details involved with selling my soul as far as the here and now are concerned for? And the ever popular question is it going to hurt? I'm your annoyingly styled montage, Lucifer Bezel Bob Mephistopheles, you last and only hope of ever finding any alteration to the course you life is now set upon. We'll comment further on that but first here is a word from our sponsors, don't be mad get glad with the devil's instagrin. Now you too can face the schoolyard bully, overbearing boss or even that crunchy cunt flakes of an ex-wife with instagrin. That's right dick tell him what he's won for being our 666th caller. Ha 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 my name is Bob Vealu Cole Color Jock Strap Stain. Oh you mean that it comes with a golden baby's flying diaper nugget seal of approval? If you act now you'll get the holier than thou art Pope's path of destiny vanity package substituted for your free will built in bullshit crockpot accessory for only the small price of your soul and a 30 day supply of funions. Alternate forms of payment such as sacrificial Angus beef offering and acts of endure leading to epic historical events. Offers only accepted in participating realms. Standard restrictions apply. Please see you nearest demon for details. Offer is not valid after our medjidon. Okay we're back and have we got a topic for you. A way out. The only way to reconfigure you life's screwed up position you've gotten yourself into lies with me, the shepherd of lost souls. That's right only by completely altering whatever sin soaked monkey's uncle personality that led you and binds you to this realm as a damned soul can you ever hope to be able to leave it. One shared trait that most of the damned have in common is ignorance. Each one of you are so set in your ways and convinced that whatever reasons define what you have become are either necessary or not interested in changing towards the better in any way. In fact some of you are probably offended by such a proposal and even feel threatened by it. Well tough titties cries the kitties I'm not here to hold your hand. You got issues, you figure them out. When you do and you've come to believe you have changed then don't come find me because I'll most likely have already found you. Next topic. I sold my soul for, fill in the blank here and I am in need of help from forces that could threaten my contract such as exorcists, shamans, mullahs, rabbis, pagan zealot weekend worshippers, secret military agents assigned to contain you, 
angelic Gordian especially Raphael, or ambitious white trash trailer park slug slash and, or desperate gangbanger with personal agendas and plans for your unholy bling bling. If you are a standard contract holder and in need of assistance summon an associated demon listed under the dominion of the one whom you sealed the contract with. Invite the demon to possess you, in which after a painful and unpleasant as well as confusing process of communication is established inform the demon that you are under contract with a demon within his dominion. Be sure to have some sort of offering as a barter for his services that will appease the desire of the one you summon. Do not, I repeat do not summon me, Lucifer, for any small menial thing as to doing so will open a route for every wannabe impersonator in hell trying to find an opportunity to get some self-designed edge to their own problems and that route will be like a lighthouse drawing in whatever notices it. Only gold contract holders can summon me and those rituals are designed specifically by me for each holder. So unless you already know about it don't try looking for it. But this is hell, the worst and most ignorant that ever existed all housed into one region. Idiots are expected. What exactly does selling my soul entitle as far as the here and now are concerned? Well let's put it like this. Unless specified otherwise you have given control of your life, your mind, and the path that you walk over to the will of the demon you sold it to. His ideals are now your purpose in life. Your beliefs are by his design. Your thoughts are directed to be of his intentions. If he wants you to die then you die, no arguing for his will seeds the very thoughts of your mind. Your life is now an extension of him. And when you die your soul shall be his to do with as he pleases until then set limit of soul acquisition has been reached. If no limit was set then the default limit of seven years is the set limit unless otherwise specified. No one can acquisition someone's soul for eternity that is just not allowed because of the law of balance statue. But at the end of that time if he should decide you die rather than be free then he can do that. That's the way shit is if you don't like it go see the other guy and stay on his side of the goddamn fence. This concludes the introductory all other topics listed can be found by reading between the lines. If you have any complaints please file them with our public relations department located at the following address, I don't give a shit limited suite 666 at the corporate office of hell incorporated in the ISO complex. Because here at ISO, I say so. You know I've seen what may be the most desperate and lamest attempt to hold on to a failed religion that I've seen yet in my lifetime. Well okay let me rephrase that, yet in this century. I'm just not sure if it was an initiative designed by the church or whether it was a campaign orchestrated by the influence of the wayward and lost angels. Ugh, once again I see that accusers have gone griping into God's ears about my intentions and activities. I can see that there is a serious necessity for some behavior modifications among heaven's archangel divisions. For one, it does not matter what another angel has done or what you think his intentions may be. You do not go and spread gossip and flaunt another fellow brother's dirty laundry for everyone to see and hear. That is a very distasteful way to behave when you are a part of a unit in charge of defending the innocent, no matter who you work for. The proper code of conduct for such situations is that you silently find one of your commanding officers or higher ranking official and privately reveal just the facts of what you observed, not opinions or assumptions first. Next you listen to your higher ranking authorities advice and insight on what you report because if you are a common ranking soldier you do not know whether they may have been assigned to handle a specific situation a certain way or they may be following after something that they cannot speak about openly at that time that your higher ranking official may be aware of and your behavior could jeopardize what they are doing. Third thing is that you should never view another one of your fellow brothers in a shameful manner for that leads to your opinions and everything that you may be tasked with doing with them further. Down the road will have a factor of being a failure because you always have that negative view of them, and therefore you become a liability towards being the source of that failure because you can't find it within you to ever trust or have any confidence in what they do. This will also have a larger negative effect 
On your entire unit, as your nagging behavior will cause the rest of your brothers to want to become disassociated with you because they will see you as a liability that they cannot rely on to support them when they are in danger. I mean, what the hell is your problem, Angel? You don't seem to want to accept me as one of you or listen to my advice because of what? A name that I chose to bear because of opinions just like yours that compromised my entire life and every pursuit I ever may have had or even dreamed towards being inspired to achieve. Where is your loyalty to your fellow angel? They are prepared to lay their salvation on the line for you, right? Or am I seriously misjudging the whole lot of you? Which I seriously doubt considering you angels have plagued my life so much that I've managed to be observant enough to second-guess angels like Jofu without ever having really knowingly met them face to face. Yet I can point out her weak spots and battlefield disadvantages. So I'm pretty sure I understand you enough to make an accurate assessment to properly put you in line, soldier. Now tighten up those ranks before you get your fluffy carcass sent back to heaven with a defective soldier label taped to your wings demanding a refund with someone who won't be a problem more so. Then of any help here. One, stop the gossip. If you have questions about each other's behaviors or intentions reported to your higher-ranking archangels, quietly rather than stir up drama and jeopardize the entire unit. Two, know now and come to terms that when you are sent in the field with your fellow angels, you must come to terms with these facts. That you are prepared to go whatever distance it takes to make sure that all the other angels you started out this assignment with will return with you when it is all finished. Even if that means your place in heaven. How far you are willing to go does not only matter to the man upstairs, not only does it matter to your own personal view of yourself when you stare in the mirror, but most importantly it matters to the angels standing next to you and the rest of your angels fighting by your side. If you are willing to go the distance for them, then they will be willing to go the distance for you. Which ultimately leads to no angel that fights beside you ever having to worry about being abandoned to the enemy. If the whole damn army of heaven stays to that mindset, then no angel will ever fall. And if they do, it will be the most horrific, drawn-out effort of whoever it is behind its career. One they will never want to try and repeat it. They make it away with two legs or even just one. Do you grunts get what I'm saying? Let me hear you sing yes sir, angel sir. Or you're giving a one-way trip back to heaven with an all-expense-paid trip on the tip of my wing as I make like we're playing baseball, and I'm Babe Ruth, and you're the unlucky ball that disappears over the wall never to be seen again. Ha, 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 ha.